Hey everybody, I know it's been a long time since I've made a video, but uh, I've just been working a lot and I've uh, been very, very busy. As you can see, I got a mess going on at my desk this weekend. Uh, this is all the electronics to the uh, main landing gear, the C-130. And this video is going to talk a little bit about 3D printing. It's going to talk a little bit about um, managing your design. And it's going to talk about uh, my uh, new adventure with the uh, Fusion 360. 3D software. So I hope you really enjoy this. Okay. What I'm wanting to do today is uh, talk a little bit about the landing gear, some of the 3D printed parts and pieces that I've done uh, for the C-130. And uh, what I've been learning with the new uh, Autodesk uh, Fusion 360. I started about uh, six days ago with it. And I tell you, I'm, I'm really, really excited how well it's gone for me. I guess it's because of the 10 or actually 20 years I've been playing around with CAD that uh, I've acclimated myself really quickly to it um, and are already been designing some parts. So what I want to do in this video is go through the software, how easy it is to use, talk a little bit more about 3D printing and uh, some of the uh, successes I've had with some of the different materials. So let's watch some of these little clips I created and then we'll come back. Okay, so here we have the spinner I designed in uh, uh, Fusion 360, I want to uh, kind of give a little uh, disclaimer here. I am not an expert at this software. I only started six days ago, but I'm very, feeling very comfortable with it already. But I want to show you what uh, parametric uh, design is in this software. One of the really cool things about this software that I just absolutely love is the ability to go back and adjust something, and then it uh, go back. It, it will go back and make the changes to every part that it would um, affect. So if you look right here, um, you're going to notice as I go across some of this, you'll see different parts highlighted. Like right there is where I created the opening for the propeller. This is where I uh, created a pattern all the way around to give me my six blades. Um, right here is where I did the initial drawing for the propeller. So let's look at that for a minute. So what I'm going to do is go into actually this one here and it says edit feature actually I'm going to do the edit profile sketch in here you can see where I drew it now if I adjust any of this right now when I hit stop sketch it will it will automatically update the entire model so let's say I go all the way back to the initial design and uh, I want to look at uh, my initial uh, profile of my spinner any adjustment I make here will update the entire drawing. So this is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Now maybe this is standard in uh, a lot of other software, but with me using regular AutoCAD and importing it into uh, 3ds Max, I've never had this ability to adjust something and then it updates all my files. I mean this is absolutely the coolest thing I've ever seen. Um, same thing with like my base. If I needed to go in and adjust the base, Here's my outline of uh, the section of the spinner backplate, or the base of the spinner. Any adjustments I do here will be updated in the entire drawing. So uh, this just gives you an idea of how beautiful of uh, software this is for me. Same thing with like if I go into my um, landing gear design for my block, if I uh, go in here and turn off that block you can see here where I've made the holes the really neat thing is I can actually specify the diameter of that hole and then mirror the hole and if I change this one diameter by a half a millimeter it automatically updates all the other holes also on the bottom I was able to put my um, uh, hexagons in so that my nut is recessed into the uh, drawing here if I change the diameter of this and I'm not sure if I can find where I drew that uh, this model is pretty intense actually um, so uh, let's see if I can find that no, 
no, no, no, no, no. No, well, I'm not going to waste any more time here. They're in here somewhere. Um, but I could go back in and readjust. And I can't find it right now. Oh, well. It may be off the scale. Hang on a minute. It is. Here it is. There it is. So if I wanted to go in here and... Yep, here it is. Edit profile sketch. Right there is the diameter of those. And if I adjust this at all, it updates all four of them. So I hope you understand uh, how powerful this is for me. Um, I mean, it, I, honestly, it took me less than an hour and a half to draw each one of these blocks. Now, it took me probably five or six hours playing around to figure out how to do some of this. One thing I really want to stress to you, three, uh, this Fusion 360 is not hard. There's a bazillion um, tutorials on YouTube. I beg you, if you're going to get this software, to go on YouTube and go through some of the basic um, tutorials. There's a guy named Lars, and look him up, and he's the greatest teacher I've, I've ever seen. So one other thing I want to talk about here is also managing your design. Many people do not understand what managing a design means. There's so much bad management in your design that can just cause you incredible amount of time. So here, I'll use this as an example. Hang on a minute. So I will sketch out on a piece of paper where these holes need to be, where these holes need to be. I will write out what these dimensions all are. And the reason I do that is so when I go in here and I start to uh, initially... Uh, start my um, uh, start my design I have all my dimensions in here already okay so if I change this 92 to 93 it will update the size and then everything downstream will be adjusted to it so you need to really think about as you're building this how are you managing your design how are you managing it in a way that it's easy to go back in and edit okay so that right there was the base size now, if I want to look at look at the profile sketch, I'm looking at this nine millimeter hole. It's eight millimeters down. The neat thing about this is, if I double click that and hit seven, it moves my hole. Okay, if I go back and put it where it should be, eight, it moves my hole. So this is the just incredible software. But you need to think about how you're going to build this part so it's easy to go back in and edit. So I hope that makes a lot of sense. And uh, uh, I just, this is the greatest software in the world. So I hope nobody's scared of using it. Okay, so as you see through a lot of what I've just shown you and when I design a part or I'm getting ready to 3D print it, there's really a lot that goes in with the type of material you're going to use. So far I've tested the PLA, the Edge, uh, PETG, the carbon fiber um, infused, ABS, regular ABS, and I've played around with nylon. Uh, nylon's supposed to be the strongest of all that I just mentioned right now, but it's also the hardest to print with. One of the problems I get with nylon is that nylon inherently will shrink. Okay, so if you're building a part on the hotbed of your 3D printer where uh, it's just going to be, let's say, like a piece of linkage and it's not going to be very thick. You can do that with nylon, no problem. However, if you're going to build anything with thickness, what will happen is the nylon will start to shrink a little bit and it will pull up off the bed and it changes your tolerances here. So if I needed an exact 10 millimeters here with nylon, about the time I get to the fifth millimeter layer of, of the uh, print, the nylon will start to shrink a little bit and it pulls it up off the table so my finished part does not have the tolerances I need. Now the ABS doesn't do that uh, as much. A lot of it's got to do with how well it adheres to your table. I've tried everything from the ABS juice to using the acetone to clean the, the bed. I can't get anything when I get into any thickness to make sure that the nylon stays stuck to the bed. Now, I've read a lot on the internet that a lot of people have that problem with nylon. Nylon inherently wants to shrink and it will pull back a little bit. So you really need to understand what your parts, what part you need to be printed with what material 
uh, you can print successfully with. My testing on the ABS here, so you kind of understand, and I know you can't see this very well, but I machined this part by hand out of um, uh, Delrin. And it's really strong, but to get all of the um, specs perfect on this was really, really hard to machine. Okay. When I 3D print the part, the specs are going to be almost exact. And I'm talking down to a tenth of a millimeter. Same thing with this. Uh, this is what the strut of the landing gear goes on. This screws together and then this slides up and down the tracks to retract my landing gear. So I've had an awful lot of success right now with printing ABS and the PETG. Okay, but the nylon, when I get to thicknesses, I have a problem. Um, also, as you saw in the video, is I have really had success with this new Fusion 360. These spinners had some problems in them because when I originally designed them, I would design it in CAD, pull it into my 3ds Max, export it out of 3ds Max as an STL file, bring it into my slicer program, and then I would print it. The nice thing about Fusion 360 is I can design the entire uh, component in the uh, Fusion 360 and export it right from there as an STL. And uh, so far my su uh, success has been just fantastic. So I hope you enjoy this video and keep the emails coming. And the C-130 keeps getting setbacks because I keep um, updating stuff on it, but it's definitely going to fly this summer sometime. Um, I've got all the uh, parts almost printed for the landing gear, so that should be done in the next uh, 24 hours. Uh, I'm real busy with work the rest of this week, and uh, this uh, next weekend I hope to get this landing gear installed back in the C-130, and by then I should have four spinners printed, and then the C-130 will really be ready to start testing uh, the motor run-ups and some taxiing. So thanks for watching the videos. Keep the emails coming, and everybody have a wonderful day.